there's a pattern that you will very often see in nature that we call Voronoi diagram. And starting with the honeycomb structure, giraffe coating patterns, drying, mud cracks, cell growth, geological patterns, foam structures, and even bacterial colonies, they all follow that pattern. The way it is created in nature is very simple. So if you have cells dividing, each cell has a center of its mass and tries to expand from there outwards. So if you visualize it like little spheres trying to expand, their borders form a Voronoi diagram. And you can use Voronoi to analyze a lot of different things, like even player positioning and movement analysis in sports like soccer or basketball. You can use it in urban planning, in computational geometry to solve problems like the nearest neighbors, shortest paths, and so, so on and so on. But here's the question. If we have a collection of these so-called seed points, what kind of an algorithm can we construct in order to generate a Voronoi diagram over them? Where do we even start? We need to come up with a way of finding where these borders between the seed points are. So if we try to do what nature does, let's say imagine small spheres growing out of each seed and then try to find the intersections once they bump into each other, that's very inefficient. That is an important point, that we cannot rely on nature to tell us the algorithm because she is not trying to generate a Voronoi diagram. She is doing other stuff and that's a byproduct. So since we are interested in that byproduct, we have to come up with an algorithm on our own. And a guy working for the famous Bell Laboratories called Stephen Fortune came up with one in 1986. Now what I love about this example is that it shows this human ingenuity. It shows that we can get inspired by nature, but we do not have to directly imitate it. Sometimes we can surpass it to achieve our own goals. When humans created airplanes, they were inspired by birds and their wings, but the Wright, Wright brothers didn't make the wings flap, right? So Festo managed to do that only recently, like 100 years after we found a way to create our own solution for flying. So let me move to the nerdy and the coolest part of this video where I try to explain how the Fortune's algorithm work. Now let's set the stage for the Fortune's algorithm. Imagine you have a set of points in a 2D plane and these points represent so-called sites. And we want to construct Voronoi cells around each site. Stephen Fortune then uh, thought of creating so-called sweep line algorithm, which is a class of algorithms that involves a line that moves, right? Sweeps over a certain area and then detects and calculates different things. When the sweeping line encounters a site event, a new parabolic arc is added to the beachfront. This arc represents a portion of the Voronoi cell associated with that site. So as the line moves, the arc will grow and its focus will follow the movement of the line. So think about it. This has little to do with how nature operates. Instead, it has to do with human, specifically Stephen's ingenuity. He decides to create these parabolas around the points that simply grow and then their intersections form the diagram. And at some moments in time, three arcs intersect at a single point and then a so-called circle event occurs. This means that the circle passing through the three points collapses and the point of collapse becomes a vertex of the Voronoi diagram. Now this vertex at that moment in time is the center of the circle passing through those three seed points. The process continues until all the events have been processed and the Voronoi diagram is fully constructed, revealing the cells around each side. And there you have it. Fortune's algorithm has successfully generated a Voronoi diagram based on the given set of points. Now, for me, it's fascinating that such a simple yet powerful algorithm can create complex spatial patterns. Understanding the problem and solving it with a proper algorithm is actually 95% of the work. This can be then translated to a piece of code in any programming language that lets you generate the Voronoi diagram. Now, almost 15 years ago, I used this and expanded it into something I called Voronex, but if you're interested in that, I will leave explanations and links to the other videos in the description. What I tried to do in this video is to explain the power and the importance of algorithms, because I feel that sometimes we are very concentrated on the execution itself, which programming language to use and so on. What is a for loop? How does an if statement work? That's all okay, but that is akin to talking about proper grammar in a specific language not about how to think and what to say. This algorithm is actually very efficient because it has an overall time complexity of O and log N. And for those of you who are new to that terminology, I will try to unpack it somewhere else. Just remember that it's efficient. Now, there are other algorithms to generate Voronoi diagrams, but this one is the most efficient, I think, and probably the most beautiful. And did you know that one of the most used uh, meshing algorithms called uh, Delano triangulation is basically a byproduct of Voronoi diagrams. Now, more about that 
some other time as well. Until then, I will try to explore the world of algorithms with you and discover how humans get inspired by nature, imitate nature, and then manage to push those abstractions to new heights. Till then, stay free.